Welcome to part three of the AES certification training. We're going to work through a design example using the designer's worksheet for Indiana residential systems. The design criteria is the same as design example number two in the Indiana design and installation manual. It is a four bedroom home with loamy core sand. It is a subsurface system that slope is at 11% and we are using a basic serial configuration. This worksheet can be a really useful tool and helps to ensure you have covered the necessary steps for designing AES systems. Now let's get started. Step number one is to determine how much advanced neuroseptic pipe is required. As you can see looking at table A, 70 feet of pipe per bedroom is standard. We will enter our number of bedrooms, in this case four, and multiply by 70 feet. This brings us to a total of 280 feet of pipe minimum. In step number two, we're going to calculate the minimum system sand bed area. You will see the table for Indiana soil loading rates below. We need to determine this loading rate based upon the on-site soils. In our case, we have loamy coarse sand. Look down the texture column of the table until you find loamy coarse sand. From there, we will move to the right and as you can see, the Indiana soil loading rate is 1.2 gallons per day per square foot, no matter what the structure of that material is. Now that we have the Indiana loading rate, we can find the corresponding Presby loading rate in Table B. Once we find 1.2 gallons per day per square foot, we move directly to the right and find the Presby loading rate, which in this case is 1.79 gallons per day per square foot. We will record these values on our sheet. And now we can finish determining just how much sand bed area is needed for our system. We will start at the 1.79 loading rate and move to the right until we are intersecting the column for four bedrooms. The value at this intersection is our minimum sand bed area. In this case, we will need at least 336 square feet of system sand bed area. We will now move on to step number three. Step number three is only applicable if you are using serial distribution. If you are using parallel distribution, you can skip this step. Because we are using serial distribution, we're going to continue with step three. Our daily design flow is calculated using the number of bedrooms, which in our case is four, and at 150 gallons per day per bedroom, we wind up with 600 gallons per day total. Because the maximum flow for each section is 750 gallons per day, we need to divide our 600 gallons per day by 750 gallons per day. This brings us to a value of 0.8. We then need to round up to the nearest whole number to find our minimum sections. This ends up being 1. If this had been a 6 bedroom system, we would have ended up needing to use at least 2 serial sections. In step number four, we're going to determine our pipe row length and how many rows we will need. We're going to pull the value we got from step one, which was 280 feet of pipe, and divide by the row length we have selected. The rows should be as long as the site will accommodate. The maximum row length is 100 feet. For this example, we have selected a row length of 70 feet. If we divide our total required pipe amount by 70 feet, we will find that we need four rows. We then divide this value by the number of required serial sections we found in step three, which was one. The math is pretty simple here. We need one serial section of four 70 foot rows. We are now going to determine the dimensions of our field. In step five, we will determine the pipe layout width. The upper left column of table C is row lengths. We will locate our row length, which is 70 feet, and move to the right until we find the total amount of pipe required, 280 feet. We will then move down this column until we reach the row telling us how many rows will be required. We can confirm our value of four that we determined in step four, and then continue down until we are in line with the center to center spacing we have selected. The minimum is one and a half feet, which is what we will use in this example. 
Where our chosen spacing and our row length column intersect is where we will find our pipe layout width. For our example, you can see that the pipe layout width will be 5.5 feet. This dimension is from the outer edge of the first pipe to the outer edge of the last pipe. In step 6, we will calculate our system sand bed width. You can see there are two options. The first, 6A, is for bed sloping 10% or less. The second, 6B, is for bed sloping over 10%. Because our bed is sloping 11%, we will use section B to calculate our sand bed width. We will use the system sand bed area that we determined in step 2, which is 336 square feet. The next value we will input is the chosen row length of 70 feet from step 4. Notice that this is in parentheses. That means you must calculate what is in the parentheses before you can divide it from our 336 square feet. We will add two feet to our row length value as you will have one foot of sand on each end of our bed. That value will be 72 feet, which we will divide our sand bed area by, resulting in 4.7 feet. We will look to the next line and put the appropriate values in. Our first calculation is taking our pipe layout width and adding 5 feet, which comes to 10.5 feet. If the value from the first line, 4.7 feet, is less than the 10.5 foot value, then the minimum system sand bed width will be 10.5 feet, which is our pipe layout width plus 5 feet. The 5 feet includes the 3 foot downslope sand extension that is mandatory for systems sloping over 10%. If this system was sloping 10% or less, then you would add 2 feet to the pipe layout width to do this calculation. As it is, we have a resulting system sand bed width of 10.5 feet. Step 7 helps us to determine what our system sand extensions will be. Again, there are two options for this step. The first, A, is for level beds. The second, B, is for sloping beds. We will use the sloping beds option. The first value will be our system sand bed width. This is the 10 and a half foot value that we determined in the previous step. We will then get the next value, which is our pipe layout width, five and a half feet, plus two feet. This brings us to seven and a half feet. We will subtract seven and a half feet from 10 and a half feet and get three feet. This will be our minimum system sand extension. If this bed was level, that value would have been divided by 2 because the sand extensions would be on each side. Because this bed is sloping over 10%, the sand extension will be placed entirely on the downslope side. The last step, step 8, helps us determine how much sand will be required beneath the pipes. If the bottom of the system sand bed is greater than 4 inches below grade, then the system is considered a subsurface system and only needs to have 6 inches of sand beneath the pipes. If the bottom of the sand bed is less than 4 inches below grade, it is considered an elevated system and will require 12 inches of sand beneath the pipes. For our example, our system was a subsurface system. Any additional information you would want to include about your system design could be included in the notes section at the bottom of the worksheet. As you can see here, I've included a drawing of the design we just completed. This drawing can also be found in your design installation manual under example number two. The second design example that we're going to work through is design example four in the Indiana Design and Installation Manual. It is a six bedroom home with single grain, very fine sand. It is a level subsurface system and we are using a serial configuration. Let's get started. Step number one is to determine how much Presby pipe is required. We will enter our number of bedrooms, in this case six, and multiply by 70 feet. This brings us to a total of 420 feet of pipe. In step number two, we're going to calculate the minimum system sand bed area. Let's find the row with very fine sand and then find where it intersects with the single grain column. 
This value is 0.5 gallons per day per square foot. Now let's find the corresponding Presby loading rate in Table B. Once we find 0.5, we move directly to the right and find the Presby loading rate, which in this case is 0.75 gallons per day per square foot. Now let's determine just how much sand bed area is needed for this system. We will start at the 0.75 loading rate and move to the right until we are intersecting the column for six bedrooms. The value at this intersection is our minimum sand bed area. In this case, we will need at least 1,200 square feet of system sand. Because we are using serial distribution, we're going to continue with step three. Our daily design flow is calculated using the number of bedrooms, which is six, and at 150 gallons per day per bedroom, that brings us to a total flow of 900 gallons per day. 750 gallons per day is the maximum flow allowed in a serial section, so we will divide 900 gallons per day by 750 gallons per day. This brings us to 1.2. And after rounding up to the nearest whole number, we can see that we will need at least two sections in this design. Now let's determine our pipe row length and how many rows we will need. We're going to pull the value we got from step one, which was 420 feet of pipe, and divide by the row length we have selected. Again, the rows should be as long as the site will accommodate, and the maximum row length is 100 feet. For this example, we have selected a row length of 70 feet. If we divide our total required pipe amount by 70 feet, we will find that we need six rows. We then divide this value by the number of required serial sections we found in step three, which was two. We can see that we will need three 70 foot rows in each of our two required sections. We are now going to determine the dimensions of our field, starting with the pipe layout width. We will locate our row length, 70 feet, and move to the right until we find the total amount of pipe required, 420 feet. Now we move down this column until we reach the row telling us how many rows will be required, which is six as previously determined. Then continue down until we are in line with the one and a half foot center to center spacing. Where our chosen spacing and our row length column intersect is where we will find our pipe layout width of eight and a half feet. Let's calculate our system sand bed width. Again, you will have to use either A or B, depending upon the slope of the system. This system is level, so we will use option A. We're going to use the system sand bed area that we determined in step two, which is 1,200 square feet. The next value we will input is the chosen row length of 70 feet from step four. We will add two feet to our row length value, bumping it up to 72 feet. When we divide our sand bed area by 72 feet, we end up with 16.7 feet. Now let's look to the next line. Our first calculation is taking our pipe layout width and adding two feet, which comes to 10.5. If the value from the first line, 16.7 feet, is less than the 10.5 foot value, then the minimum system sand bed width would be 10.5 feet. Because this is not the case, we will need system sand extensions. Let's determine what our system sand extensions will be. Again, there are two options for this step. The first, A, is for level beds. The second, B, is for sloping beds. We will use the level bed option. The first value will be our system sand bed width which was 16.7 feet, but we're going to round up to 17 feet for ease of construction. The next value is our pipe layout width plus two feet. This brings us to 10 and a half feet. We will subtract 10 and a half feet from 17 feet and get six and a half feet, which will then be divided by two. This gives us a 3.25 foot system sand extension on each side of the bed. Let's check our math in the next line. First, we put in our system sand extension value of 3.25.
We then multiply by 2 to get 6.5. We add our pipe layout width plus 2 feet, which was 10.5. And we end up confirming our 17 foot final system sand bed width. Just to reiterate, the last step, step 8, helps us determine how much sand will be required beneath the Presby pipes. If the bottom of the system sand bed is greater than 4 inches below original grade, then the system is considered a subsurface system and only needs to have 6 inches of sand beneath the Presby pipes. If the bottom of the sand bed is less than 4 inches below original grade, it is considered an elevated system and will require 12 inches of sand beneath the pipes. Our system is a subsurface system, so we will only need 6 inches of sand beneath the pipes. Again, any additional information you would want to include about your system design could be included in the notes section at the bottom of this worksheet. I have included the plan and section view drawings of the bed we just designed. This can also be found on page 16 of the Design and Installation Manual. This concludes Part 3. We hope it's been helpful. If you ever have design questions that aren't being answered here, please feel free to call our technical support line. Up next is part 4, which will cover the installation process.